So what is this thing called adrenal dysfunction and how is stress actually associated with it? Because there's a lot of misconceptions about what adrenal dysfunction is and how we should be treating these little glands called the adrenals. So let's go back and have a look at our average day in the office. So we start our day, we're all looking for a fantastic bright day, we're flying through our workload, the number of paperwork that we have is drastically reduced and we know that we're going to get through our day without a drama. So for lunch we head out, we enjoy some outside sunlight, maybe with a colleague or someone similar, and we just enjoy it knowing that hey our day's on track, everything is great and hunky dory. We head back into the office, we're all prepared to finish on time and lo and behold somebody has dumped a whole heap of paperwork and a whole heap of more work for you during the day. And it's all piled up on your desk and you need to get through it before the end of the day. And you're just ready to tear your hair out. How are you going to get through all this work now before the day's end? But this isn't really stress in itself. What you're really feeling is the brain's inability to cope, a, an emotional distress, if you prefer. So stress itself is really a brain orientated event, not a glandular event. And it really involves three structures. One is the brain itself. The second is a gland called your pituitary gland. And the third is a set of glands that sit in your kidneys called your adrenal glands. So your brain sends information down to your pituitary gland to organize all the hormonal control of it, which sends information to your adrenals to launch a hormone called cortisol, which comes up and hits your brain. And your brain then acknowledges the fact that this stress mechanism has been done. When this happens all the time though, the brain starts burning out and we start getting all these symptoms that we can actually pick up from it. So the first thing we see with the brain itself is changes to our memory, changes to our cognition, our attention, our ability to focus, our spatial awareness and navigation skills. Our pupils start to change, we get light sensitive, our pupils can pulsate. Some people will start getting tenderness around their Achilles and around their heels as a result of it. Our posture changes and we start slumping forward as we start getting fatigue and, and a loss of our extensor tone from our brain fatigue. And some people will develop a little thing called Rogoff sign, which is tenderness in the lower part of your, your bottom ribs. So what can we do about this? Well, most people will start looking at treating the glands themselves, but really it's a brain orientated thing. So the first thing we can do to give our brain a bit of a rest is actually just take a holiday. And whilst it'll be great, we know that's not always possible with everyday life, but a holiday would be great. The second thing we can do to give our brain a bit of a rest is to get rid of tech. The blue flashing bright lights, vertical scrolling really does wind up the brain itself. The third one, which seems really simple, is just declutter your workspace. If we get rid of all the clutter around our workspace, often this will just help free up the mind and give you some time and give you some space. But like always, if you're having trouble, you don't know your way out and you're getting a little bit stuck with all this type of stuff, don't be afraid to ask for help because sometimes these things are hard to do and hard to unwind, but that's what we're here to help you with.